Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video, we're looking at another large ship, and this one is called the Swarog Escort Destroyer DST-013BH, which is this lovely thing right here. So this is a large block ship primarily designed to take on pirates in head-to-head -head combat, and it's survival ready. So pressing F10 and finding the Swarog in the spawn menu here it is. This thing is 1,430 large blocks using the decorative block number 2 DLC packs. It uses no mods and it does have absolutely everything about this ship listed on the workshop page on Steam. So there we go. We'll give this a thumbs up which I already have. Move all the way around to the very front. We'll have a quick look around the outside. A quick look at both the interiors because they are separated. Then we'll fly around for a bit and see how it handles. So at the very front here, this is what we get. We've got two rocket launchers to blast your enemies with a Gatling turret on the top and the bottom. We then have these dark grey and yellow blocks that come all the way out to the front that you could use as ramming spikes if you wanted to. As we continue around the side here, we'll see even more turrets in the form of our Gatling turrets and the rocket launchers. And they do have welders right next to them to make sure they're in tip top shape in combat. Along the side here, we've got a few hydrogen thrusters, some of them being covered up with passages, others have been left bare, and it's not too much of a problem if they took damage, because there's plenty more around the ship. Continuing along, we're going to come to this red light. Now, I will mention now that all the lights on the ship were blinking at quite a rapid pace and were very bright, but I've turned them off to save your eyes. In case you're sensitive to bright flashing lights, or even if you just have epilepsy, I thought it'd be better just to have them as a constant light for easier viewing. But yes, this red light is next to a small doorway that will come inside the ship. So this is where your engineer or simple crew members are going to live their life. We've got a cryopod inside here. We've got a control seat that can fly the ship. And we also have access to everything such as the welders, a survival kit, refineries and all that, which will be very useful in survival mode. We should come back down and out of there. And it's going to be the same on the opposite side, except for a red light, we'll have a green light next to the doorway. Turning around and coming over to this section right here, even more hydrogen thrusters. They'll eventually move all the way across onto this little arm, which has a camera sitting on it. Now this is the only piece of detail that appears on these little... They're not like nacelles, I don't really want to call them nacelles because they are kind of like... Spoilers, let's call it a spoiler, right? Yes, they only have a camera on the side so we can get a good view on our left and right. And we do have a light on the side there which was originally blinking. Coming all the way around the back. There we go. As we continue around to the back of the ship, this is what's going to be pushing us along. We've got two large hydrogen thrusters along with three small hydrogen. And putting my light on, we get a good view of how these have been encased in. So the three, once again, covered up with passages, and the large ones have some blocks surrounding it to try and protect it from any kind of oncoming fire. If you were to move up and above here, we're going to see some great block work and even more hydrogen thrusters. Again, another light that was blinking. And as we continue along, we can see our little side parts that go over to our cameras. Moving all the way across to here, we've got little dips that go inside. And this is going to be where our captain goes inside to fly the ship. Peeking my head straight through here, we've got a medical bay tree spawn on. Then an access to the cockpit up there. We'll come back to that a bit later. Continuing going along the top here, even more Gatling guns with welders sitting right behind them. A window block for our captain to peer outside from our cockpit. Then moving towards the front here, we've got a connector for a small ship to dock on and restock our ship with ammunition, or to even unload stuff we've collected. And towards the front, even more hydrogen thrusters with passengers in the middle. So there we go. If I was to drop down and come underneath, I'll put my light on for the moment. Even more turrets, even more welders, and even more thrusters. So there we are with that. Coming to the middle, a large hydrogen thruster to keep us balanced while on a planet. Then moving towards the back here, another Gatling gun, even more hydrogen thrusters, and then some nice detail towards the back. And that is it for the outside of the Swarog Escort Destroyer. It's a very nice ship, it's got a lot of stuff going on with it, and we do have a nice lot of firepower on here, so we can take on a similar ship in combat, and hopefully come out the victor. Yes, now I can grab hold of my character. What we'll do is come back to that first room we saw, all the way down to here. In fact, we'll come to the opposite side and go through the green door. There we are. And now we we'll drop down. So unfortunately this thing does not have a gravity generator on it so we are going to get very wonky while walking around. And this is what we get on the inside. We've got a lovely golden glow. We can see our jump drives, our batteries, a little seat to sit on which currently has nothing set up. 
but we can fly this around if the captain got destroyed or even the bridge got destroyed. So we do have a backup seat, which is always nice. Right behind there, we can go in and access our welder, which is for the gun right below our seat. And we do have an O2 H2 generator sitting right above there to make sure we're stocked up with hydrogen and oxygen. And just behind that, a large cargo container to store all your stuff in. Turning around and looking at the back of the room, we can see another jump drive on the opposite side. And we appear to be stuck somewhere. Oop, there we go. That's a bit better. Yes, we'll walk around to the opposite side. Even more conveyors everywhere. Even more access points for our welders. Yes, we'll come out of the side we saw at the very start. So just coming out of there and moving to the very top. Coming down over to here, dropping our feet down. If I can, there we go. We'll now walk around over to this section where we've got a lovely glowing gold light. That will come all the way down and into this section right here. So closing up the door, we have a medical bay to respawn on and to change our outfit. We've got a cryopod in the floor for a quick recharge or even to go to sleep in and a cargo access to drop stuff off or to take stuff out. Coming around to the opposite side, nothing much is going on here. Turning around and coming up this little ramp, we do have small little gaps in here which we could use to decorate. Say we could shove in a bed or even a toilet block if you wanted to. That's entirely up to you. Then coming over to here, this is our cockpit and this is our first person view. So number one is going to be to turn on and off our welders around the ship, with number two to turn off our decoys. Our decoys are located in our wings on the side, right behind our camera. So there it is right there, we can switch it on and off. Number three and number four is for our hydrogen thrusters. Number three will be to turn on and off our small hydrogen thrusters around the ship. And number four will be for the large ones at the back. Number five is for our O2H2 generator on and off. Number six is for our jump drive where we can jump 2,585.54 kilometers, which is very nice for this size of ship. Number seven is for our camera at the very front, right next to our rocket launchers. Number eight and number nine is for our cameras on the side on our wings with a decoy right behind them. There we are with that. On tab number two, we then got our auction tanks on and off, our reactors on and off, our gyroscopes on and off, turrets and rocket turrets on and off. Number six is for our connector at the front there to lock and lock it, with number seven to be turning it on and off. Number eight is once again for our O2H2 generator to turn it on and off. And number nine is for our jump drive on and off. And then on tab number three, we've got manual controls for all of our guns around the ship. Pressing number one. There we go. We can just switch between all of them. Maybe not damage our own guns by accidentally shooting them. And yes, eight and nine is for the rocket launchers on the side. There we go. Tab number four, five, six is empty. So what we can do now is a very quick thruster test. And then we'll go and shoot up another ship. So moving forwards, as you can see, we are pretty slow, despite having two large hydrogen thrusters pushing us around. Coming to a stop, we are even slower, so we may need to do a 180 to bring this to a stop in a more reasonable amount of time. There we go with that. We're now doing a 180, boosting forwards, and that's a lot better. Moving left. And moving right, we're quite slow with that, but that's to be expected from a large ship. Moving down. A lot better than left and right, and moving up. Again, better than left and right, but forwards is still faster than everything else. Waving my mouse around, this is what we get. There is one hell of a lot of weight on here, which is perfect for this size of ship. You don't want it to be too floaty, so that kind of removes the realism of flying a large ship. Okay, so here we go. I've spawned it in. It should be somewhere around here, wherever it's gone. I can't find it anymore. It should be close by. Um, there it is over there. We've got our welders turned on. We've got our decoys on. All of our turrets are turned on. So it should be perfectly safe to go straight towards it. Come all the way around over to here. We're going to press number seven to come into our camera. All the way around. We're going to zoom all the way in. There is the ship. There is now the signal. And we're going to start firing into it. Coming to third person view. We're going to try and broadside it to limit the damage to the cockpit. I'm going to rotate to hopefully get our turrets to shoot it. So we should be fairly okay. Our blocks are going to take a lot of damage, but our gun should still be fine. Just turn it around like so. We should be able to choose swing all the way around and disable all of their turrets. Hopefully our welders will not take damage because that's going to be the one problem. If it's the welders get damaged, then our guns are going to get destroyed. But it looks like we're doing very well. And it should be destroyed any moment. So coming into first person view, this is what we're getting. Our cameras on the side are gone, so we'll take a look at the damage of that in just a minute. We're going to do a roll all the way around to here. 
and continue moving along. Our camera at the front there is looking pretty poorly with our little ramming spikes. But that looks like the guns on the Atlas have been completely disabled. Oh no, I saw a flash up there. Hopefully they can target them. If we were to move all the way around at like so, we might need to change their targeting to make sure they go for the guns first of all. In fact, it doesn't look like I'll need to fill around with the turrets because they have done a good job and they have sorted everything out. So we're just going to come out here, find our free camera. And we're going to take a look at the damage to the Swarog. This is what we get. This is it all firing against that. That's now just going to get shredded into little pieces. At the front here, our little spikes are in a very wonky state. Moving around the side with my light on, a lot of the blocks have been deformed, but our guns are still in tip-top shape. Our thrusters are actually doing surprisingly well, especially the ones below here with no protection whatsoever. And all around to here, our little walkway going into the rear section has been damaged. Moving across onto our wings, we can see our decoy is sitting there, still in okay shape. But we lost our cameras on the side. Coming all the way around to the very back, I don't think we took many shots to the back here. No, we did not. That is still in perfect condition. Then along the top here. There we go. If we were to drop down and come inside into our little engineering section, everything is perfectly fine inside here. And there we go. So yes, this ship has done a fantastic job at doing a one-on-one -on -one combat versus another ship of a similar size. The welding system did give it a major advantage, but it's always great to test it out to see how well it can do. And this is all that's left of the Atlas. It's just small little pieces, gyroscopes floating everywhere. And yes, that is that for the Swarog Escort Destroyer. So it's a fantastic ship if you're looking for something survival ready to take on pirates in space. There'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around with it yourself. And I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.